how does it feel to realise now that it is 25 years? It's incredible to think it's, it's passed so quickly, you know. It, it took it home to me there when I watched Jack when he was over and, and, and it was lovely to see him, you know. He's obviously, um, he's 80 years old about a couple of months ago, which is incredible. And, and the incredible thing about it was 25 years ago, he was only 55 my age, <laughs> my age now, and I felt he was an old man then. Maybe people are thinking, I'm an old man now, I probably am, uh, but I still feel young. Uh, but the time passes so quickly. Uh, but it's still nice to remember it, and, 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 and you know, this 25 years now, a lot of people have talked about it. I think it was, it was so positive, uh, and, and went on for so long, and everybody's got their own stories around it, um, and that's why it's sort of living on for, in people's minds. And is it something as a team, I suppose, that still bonds you? Is it, is it something that you'll, you'll always kind of hold together? Is there is still a connection between you all as a team? Yeah, well, we, we meet each other tr mostly through work. Um, yeah. and or, or maybe we'll bump into each other. Some, some, some of them are closer with friendships than, than I played in Scotland. I would be friendly with Mick McCarthy. I'd be friendly with Jerry Payton, those type of guys. Uh, Chris Shooton. So I've kept in touch with, with those. The rest of them I would meet through through events. On holiday there just recently out in Portugal. And we had a few pints and we had a bit of crack. And, and we always go back to the stories of, of that period. That's that's the interesting thing. And you, you mentioned Scotland there. I suppose looking back at that, that famous save now, how was that for you after what had happened in the Scottish Cup final earlier on? Like, yeah. You know, with Aberdeen. Yeah. Like, how was it to, to make such an incredible save after the disappointment, you know, just a few months previous? And it was a big disappointment because, you know, that year there was our only uh, option of winning something and we got beat against Aberdeen in a, in a sort of a 9-8 penalty and it went the wrong way for lots of the penalties. Um, so to come in then and, and turn around and, and go the right way for, for penalties, um, every penalty and then save one, uh, it was down to a bit of a plan and sitting down with like Jerry Payton who had more experience than I had he was older than me he was like a coach even though he was a backup goalkeeper uh, and the two of us sat and, and, and discussed it and we came up with a bit of a plan I met or I spoke to Daniel Tomofti uh, recently and uh, he had said that he had changed his mind uh, which was interesting he said that he normally hits them down the middle and somebody had said that no hit them down I was slow he said I was slow going down that was the story I wasn't slow that day, <laughs> and um, he changed his mind. So that that, and then he said, of course, that the divot that Tony Cascarino took out of the ground yeah. upset him also because he couldn't get the ball to sit quite, quite right. And uh, I think Dave Dave Valeri had mentioned that also that he had found it a little bit more difficult when when he went to take his, but didn't it didn't put Dave off. Yeah. I'd only put him off the off Daniel him off. You weren't under severe pressure because you knew that. If you made a save, it was a real bonus because everybody's expected to score against you from 12 yards. So, But to make the save, it set us up. If probably we went behind in that penalty shootout, then it would be a different kettle of fish. Yeah. So as soon as I made the save, I knew that we had a real chance. And it was almost the last penalty, yeah. which was great. It was great. So, But then, of course, the shock of seeing Dave O'Leary walking down <laughs> because Dave had never taken a penalty, you know. And it was interesting, actually, at the weekend we were discussing it uh, and uh, Ray Houghton said that he'd never taken a penalty before. And, and, and that, that surprised me. So we had two people in that group of five that had never taken a competitive penalty before. And is it true that David O'Leary had been practicing penalties at Niall Quinn? He was, he was, yeah, you're right. You've done re your, <laughs> your research. Uh, they had this thing, both of them roomed together. And what Niall used to do is put my gloves on after training was finished. And he would go in, and he was so big, he was six foot five, Niall, and he just lay down in the goal and he filled the goal. But uh, he would put it on, and, and the idea was that you took three penalties and uh, if you missed one of the penalties, you owed Niall a fiver. And if you scored a three, he owed you. But so he actually had it stacked in his favour, <laughs> believe it or not. And Dave and him was at it the whole, whole, almost four or five weeks. So they were practising. And it was a great way to practise. It was a fun way to practise. And not to keep dwelling on it, but aside from obviously that game, what would be the other highlight from that tournament? Would meeting the Pope that Yes, I think so. Going, going to Rome in general and, and yeah. taking on Italy in Rome, but uh, going to see the Pope. Uh, it was funny, actually, because, you know, Niall, uh, or, or, uh, Jack had sort of promised Mick Burner physio that he would take, take us there uh, if we got to Rome. And Jack thinking, of course, it would be the final and we'd no chance of getting to the final, so that pressure wouldn't be on him. And then suddenly we get there in the quarterfinal and Mick, right away, as soon as we got there, the first thing Mick Burner said, listen, Jack, you said it, you promised it, you must 
must do it. And that's exactly what happened. So the, the hierarchy then, especially in the religious world, of, they had all their contacts and they made it happen. And we got in. And it was like groups jumping up, uh, singing hymns and, you know, different things. And it was happening. Around. And then the Pope comes out. And then the bishops comes out with him. And then we got up to meet him. And then I was brought out front alongside Jack and Charlie and Mick and that because I had saved the penalty and he, we had a discussion. And he talked and told me that he was that goalkeeper when he was young and in and, and Poland. And that, that's, that. And then, of course, it was all over the place. And my, I'm afraid down in my house in Donegal, the picture's up there in, 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 in the wall. Uh, and I think there's been a few pictures around different places, yeah. We were Irish. We were going there. And it was something different than just a football. Yeah. So it was a great memory to have. And, you know, the man's become a saint now and, and that. And it's nice to say we, we touched the hand of a saint. The Women's World Cup, obviously, yes. has gone massive massive um, support for it this year. You yes. Know, England had a fantastic World Cup campaign. They had. They had. They were unfortunate, very unfortunate. Unfortunate, yeah. Heartbreaking, yeah. really. But um, you've got Ireland women's team now yeah. looking ahead to the Euros. Is there any bit of advice? You've been you've been there, you've been at, like you've played at the top competition yeah. in the world in football. Is, is there any bit of advice you could give? Well, the, the, there's mentally preparation, but there's also the physical preparation. You, you've got to go prepared. Um, the mental thing will take over uh, eventually getting closer to them but now you know they've got to prepare themselves and be and be ready for that competition um, I think you've got to be single-minded and be really positive really positive and believe that you're going to actually do something uh, individually and collectively uh, you know the positive attitude if you build any negative things into it and fear factor or anything out there then eventually that will come out in your game so be positive do your preparation Almost, I'm sure the coaches and all of the coaches, because I know the guys and the girls is involved, they'll have done their homework and they'll, they'll be well prepared, much more prepared than we were in our World Cup, I suppose, uh, because that's the way the game's gone now is analysis and, and they know the, the strengths and weakness of the opposition. Take all that on board, but get yourself physically and, and mentally re prepared and make sure it's positive. Paddy, you're, you're known as the son of Donegal. And as a result, I just have a couple of questions to see how truly Donegal <laughs> Oh, my word, you're going to catch me out yeah, now. So okay, go on. So there's a very famous celebrity who owns a house in Donegal. I'm going to give you a few options to pick from. Is it Eamon Dunphy, Kim Kardashian, or Sarah Jessica Parker? Sarah Jessica Parker. Very good. Up in Glencombe Kill or up in Kilcar, yeah. <laughs> uh, how many All-Ireland titles have Donegal won? Two. Ninety-two, uh, and the last one I wasn't—I didn't actually. Make, I was there in ninety-two, yeah. and myself, and my wife was there, and the last one was what three years ago now. Perfect, right, yeah. twelve. Twelve. Would actually, would you swap all your achievements for an All-Ireland medal with Donegal? I don't know, don't think I would swap them all, but I would have loved. I would have loved. You know, I never won a GA medal, even though I played yeah. in the minors, under twenty-one, and senior all in one year. We were down the third division at the time, uh, and the club football we never won. And the year I left. The, the club went and won an intermediate, <laughs> an intermediate medal, and uh, I wish I had a medal to say yeah, yes, more, yes. Yeah. Um, okay, there's three patron saints of Ireland. One of them is from Donegal. Could you name? Glen uh, Conkill. Yeah, from Oya. And um, there's also three counties that border Donegal. Do you know which one? Yes, Derry, uh, Fermanagh, and I. I'm, I'm just trying to think. Is it Leitrim or Sligo? Yeah, I'm yeah. trying to think. I think there's a few more. Ah, I think it's Leitrim. I think you're right. You're right. I think it's Leitrim, actually.